When it comes to World Cup cross country racing, we do see a split between full suspension bikes and hardtails. Now, many of the top riders actually travel with both bikes. And they'll decide which one they want to use depending on how rough and how technical that course is. So today I'm going to compare the two. I've got a full suspension bike and a hardtail. So I've got a Canyon Exceed CF SLX, so fully carbon fiber, super lightweight hardtail. Both bikes are running 29 inch wheels. Hardtail has got 100 mil travel up front, two by drivetrain, it weighs in at 21 pounds. The full suspension bike is Canyon Lux, only weighs two pounds more, so still very light, 23 pounds. Again, I've got a two by on this bike, but now I've got 100 mil front and rear suspension. So the Lux is a cross country and marathon race machine. We've seen such riders as Alvin Licata use it a great success at the Cape Epic. So big long days, back to back. That's when a full suspension bike is really gonna come into its own. That comfort and compliance, but also don't forget you've got better traction on full suspension bikes. The tire's just gonna track the floor that little bit better. You've also got a rock shocks remote lockout up on the bars that will fully lock out the front and rear shock simultaneously should you feel the need. The Exceed is what I would call a proper carbon 29er cross country race machine. Now Canyon say this bike has been designed with the highest levels of stiffness, compliance and durability. This is all about being super lightweight and a rocket ship up the climbs. So I'm going to put the two bikes head to head in my local hills on a cross country loop I ride all the time. It consists of one decent sized climb, just about 25 minutes of lung bursting stuff, and then one really nice swoopy single track rocky descent. It'll be interesting to see if the full suspension bike makes enough time in the rough stuff to make up for its extra weight and slightly less efficient pedaling. Right, okay, so first lap on the hardtail, let's go. Top cross country racers aren't worrying about comfort. Well, maybe slightly when it comes to marathon and stage races where riding time goes over a few hours, but we're talking short track XEO here. Compliance is an interesting one. Of course, we know that a full suspension bike is more comfortable to ride, but the movement of the suspension to soak up the rough ground also means that forward motion is more efficient. But is that all down to feel or will it make a difference on the clock? Credit here goes to Max Glaskin, who's an award-winning freelance science, engineering, and technology journalist with a special interest in cycling. In his really interesting book, The Science of Cycling, it shows that some tests say that a full suspension bike can reduce vertical forces by 50%, but crucially, the horizontal forces by a quarter, which means that less energy is used to propel the bike forward. But how rough does the trail need to be for this to make a difference? Okay, so there's the science. Now let's take the full suspension bike to the trail to see if it makes any difference against the clock. So to the results of my test, but let's start off with actually the feel. Of course, the full suspension bike is more comfortable, but they both felt super light, really fast up the hill. Um, down the hill, I definitely have more confidence on the full suspension bike for its handling, but also a big one is for sort of puncture resistance. On the hardtail with skinny cross country tires, I feel like you do have to be that a little bit more careful in the rocky sections. There's a full suspension bike, you just have that little bit more compliance on the floor. Grip as well, of course, for going up the hill. Traction on the rear tire was really important because it was slippy in part, so the full suspension bike does grip a little bit better, but also for riding back down the hill, um, obviously for corner and for braking, the full suspension bike does feel that a little bit better. 
Going back to Max Glaskin's book, The Science of Cycling, which I must say is super interesting, definitely look it up. Some lab tests have shown that full suspension riders use less oxygen on rough terrain, but more on smooth. So is that really a surprise? I guess not. We see fully rigid bikes, of course, in road races, so no real surprises there. But again, it's gonna be interesting, I think, to test that out again and try and really work out when the trail becomes rough enough that a full suspension bike rider uses less oxygen. So, to the times. Now, the interesting part. So, on my hardtail, from the start point to the trig point, so the summit of the hill, took me 27 minutes and 21 seconds. I thought I said I went as fast as I could. That was a very tough climb. On the full suspension bike, I did it in 25 minutes, 21, so a full two minutes quicker. But I will uh, hold my hands up here. I did the two tests on consecutive days. So on the second day, I actually rode the hardtail and it was much windier. So to be honest, that time doesn't really stack up. I bet on both tests, I went as hard as I possibly could. So I know my sort of threshold power, my heart rate. And I was hitting that exactly for those two rides. And the, th the times, I guess, to be honest, was all down to the wind. So I'm gonna have to hold my hands up and say, I need to redo the test. So if you keep your eyes on the dirt shed next week, hopefully I'm gonna go out this week and do it back to back. So I'm gonna find a much shorter cross country loop. So I'm gonna have to split it into a full loop rather than one big climb and one full descent. And I'm gonna do the two tests again. For reference, I'll give you the downhill times as well. So the hardtail was eight minutes 54 downhill, but the full suspension bike was a, a full one minute and a half slower, 10 minutes 29. That does go to show you that on the hardtail, I had a headwind on the way up and then a tailwind on the way down. So this test is completely ruined. I apologize for that. But for me, I think the really interesting point is the science, is when is a full suspension bike faster or slower? And again, I actually want to reach out to some pro cross-country racers. Do they use science? Do they test them back to back? Or is it down to feel? So keep your eyes peeled on the Dirt Shed Show coming up and hopefully I'll have a proper conclusion for you. Um, but whilst here, watch some more videos. Click over here for another full suspension versus hardtail over there for a cross-country racer versus a downhill racer to see who's faster on a cross-country track. Hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you like my really ruined conclusions this video, but hopefully I'll follow up soon.